You guys doing good this morning? Well, it's been a good morning, so we're just going in the overflow here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, God's been, he's been speaking some things lately. And one of the things that he's been speaking to me, which is going to be our message this morning, is that you can do hard things. You can do hard things, and it, it doesn't mean that you can do hard things, but it means you can do hard things in Christ. And I, you know, the last few months, that phrase, I can do hard things, has been coming up in my spirit. And I know the Holy Spirit is speaking it to me because it's time to take it to another level. And it's time for us not to hold back, pull back, but it's time for us to trust that God is going to be with us in anything that we have to do. Anything that is hard, you can do it with the help of the Lord. Amen? And it doesn't matter if it's stretching you, if it's uncomfortable. I'm here to tell you today, we can do hard things. We can do hard things. Last week, Tim talked about um, his message was titled, Fight. And it is hard to fight the battles in this life, amen? But we've got to stay engaged and stay fighting in the spirit and allow God to work. Not pull back, not give up. The enemy wants you to give up. He doesn't want you to move forward. And our flesh constantly wants us to take it easy. Our flesh constantly is telling us, oh, just quit, just give up. But in these last days, we are not called to quit. We are not called to give up. Jesus finished what he started. And as his kids, we can finish what he's called us to do. Amen? He's called us to do great things. And we got to remind ourselves that we are more than conquerors in Christ. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. That should get you a little excited. Because it's not my ability, it's not in my strength, but when I am in the Holy Spirit, when I'm walking with the Lord, when I'm trusting and believing and um, applying the Word of God, I can do things that I couldn't do in my flesh. He's a great God, and we can do hard things. Right now, there is a shift happening in the Spirit. There's a shift happening in our churches. We're seeing it in the world. And we are seeing God doing some great things. But we are also seeing waves of evil swelling. And this is not the time for us to just give up. This is the time for us to rise up and say, we know our God is mighty. We know God has this. We know who um, is coming back soon. And that's Jesus Christ. We know we have the victory because of Jesus Christ. It's interesting, when we were in Florida a few weeks back, the, the waves were just crashing on the beach. They, you know, because of the hurricane that was out there, they were just swelling. And, um, you know, I like to pull my chair up uh, right there and, you know, let the nice little wave come up. Well, no, that wasn't working. It's like I'm sitting there with my chair and all of a sudden the waves are coming up, slapping me in sand and seaweed. And I'm like, okay, this is not fun anymore. Let's pull back a little bit. But that is what we're seeing in the spirit in the evil world right now. The enemy is not happy and the enemy wants to take down you. He does not want you to be victorious. He does not want you to be strong in the Lord. He wants you to cower back. So we are seeing swells of evil increasing. What does a swell mean? It means to increase in size and volume as a result of internal pressure. We're seeing a whole lot of internal pressure right now. We're seeing the birthing pains. This is nothing new, you guys. This is nothing that you, we, if you read the word, you know in the last days, things are going to get harder. But the glory of the Lord is going to get stronger. The glory of the Lord is going to get greater. So the enemy is swelling and unleashing all attack against God. But let me tell you, the glory of the Lord is also, the waves of the glory of the Lord are coming. And they're sweeping over his people. And they are, they're just, you know, the, when you stay in the glory of the Lord, you don't have to fear. 
We don't have to run and hide. But what we do in the spiritual battle, we walk in love. We walk in strength. We walk in peace. See, the world is all out of kilter. There is no peace. They are struggling. But see, God, he gives us peace. That passes all understanding. So we don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. And we got to know that God is with us. That's why we can do hard things. That's why you can do hard things. See, doing hard things is fighting the good fight of faith. Are you going to fight the good fight of faith? That does not mean fighting with people. That means fighting in the spirit. That means going to prayer. That means going to the Lord. That means reading the word of God and applying it to your life and being a light in the darkness. That's what fighting's all about. The world wants to fight and yell and scream, but God's people, we should not be like that. We should be walking in love. We have a hope. We have a hope. We have a savior of the world, and we need to demonstrate his love and his goodness. Yes, his truth. We hold to the word of God. We don't give in, and we don't give up, and we don't compromise. But we walk in peace. We walk in love. There's strength in that. But the enemy wants to stop you. Let me tell you that he wants to stop us. But it's time to make God a priority today. It's time for you to make God a priority in your life today. Not he's second, not he's third, but God is number one in your life. It's time for God's people to pray fervently fervently. That means I'm praying about everything. That means I'm praying. I'm talking to Jesus all day long. It doesn't mean you got to go sit over there for three hours and hallelujah. No, it means you pray all day long. God already knows what you're thinking. He knows your stinking thinking. He knows your good thinking. He already knows. Just be honest with him. Just pour your heart out to him and pray. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. These are the hard things, you guys. It's hard to pray all the time because we want to get up all up in our head and be focused on our business and do what we want to do. But God's saying, I need to be with you. I need some time with you. Make time for Jesus. Make time for Jesus. What was demonstrated at the opening Olympics for all the world to see was demonic. And whether you thought that depicted the Last Supper or Greek mythology, it was wrong. Yeah. And I read this. It's kind of interesting. This guy had posted this and said, the opening ceremony, uh, cer this is what a lot of people are saying. The opening ceremony of the Olympics was a mockery to God and to Christianity. But others are saying, that's a stretch. It's just art. Plus, they weren't mocking God. They were honoring a Greek god or Greek gods, which means the god of drunkenness, lust, debauchery, insanity, and ritualistic sacrifices. Well, okay then. That's okay. Come on now. See, we're calling evil good and good evil. We don't need this for our children. We don't need to be calling what's wrong and what's sin that it's good. And so that's where we, as God's people, stand up with truth, but with love. Because see, the, the world's expecting us to be hateful. Because let's be real, there's been a whole lot of hateful Christians. But that's not who we are to be. We are to be a people that are full of love, full of grace, full of mercy, but we want you to know the truth of the gospel. We want your soul saved from hell. We want you to be with Jesus. We want you filled up and flowing with the power of God in your life. We don't want you to walking around like defeated and a victim anymore because there's power in the goodness of God. There's more for you. There's more for us. And we are called to shine 
brighter in the darkness. The darkness may, the waves of darkness may be trying to close in, but saints of God, it's time to stand up with love and with the truth and shine bright in your part of the world. He's calling on you. I can't go to your home. I can't go to your workplace. I can't go to where you can go to. You be the light. You be the love of Jesus. You be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Oh, the battle is not with people or flesh and blood, but it's with every evil anti-God spirit that sets itself against the kingdom of God. But I am telling you, the wave of the Holy Spirit will pour out as we, his people, pray waves of prayer. Pray waves of prayer. You know, don't make it a hard thing. Just pray waves of prayer and God will change you and he will help you have a different perspective on what's going on. It won't scare you. I mean, yes, it'll mess with your head a little bit, but you ultimately know God's got us. God's got us and he's good. And we're going to rescue people that are hurting and need Jesus in this hour. You're called. You're called. You're called. Amen. So do hard things. Doing hard things is fighting the good fight of faith. And we can do that. And just because things get hard doesn't mean it's impossible. Keep going. Keep growing. And don't give up. Don't give up. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens me you. Amen. Time after time, I have experienced his presence and his strength with me when I've had to do hard things. And it's hard. It's hard to do the right thing. It's hard to make the right choices. It's hard to love people you just don't want to love. It's hard. It's hard to be faithful in the waiting. Anyone? It's hard to trust God for a breakthrough when things look terrible in the natural. It's hard. For me, it was very hard walking in the streets of Ethiopia Ethiopia years back. And we went down into the, the red light district. And it was hard walking through the streets, smelling the urine that was just going down the streets. And the girl standing at the door after door. Most of them wouldn't even look at you in the face. And when you would catch their eye, I mean, your heart is just ripped out because, you know, they're just waiting for the next person to come along. Some of these girls, they're, they got a child underneath the cot. This is their life. And you're like wanting to just rescue them all and grab them all and say, this isn't it. This isn't all you have to put up with. And we were there because there's a home there that is trying to rescue these girls out of this life. Some go and go to this home and they're able to be transformed and learn a skill so they can earn money the right way and also learn the love of Jesus for their life. But so many are given the opportunity to escape this life only to stay in it because they're addicted to drugs and they're afraid. It's a hard thing to break from something that has gripped your life. It's a hard thing to let go of something that has controlled your life for many, for so long. But let me tell you, there's freedom on the other side. There's freedom on the other side if you will do the hard things. God will equip you. It's hard to realize that we're living in quite a jacked up world. (laughs) It's hard to deal with the pain of someone you love that passes away. It's hard to deal with the pain of someone that walks away. These are hard things, but let me tell you, you don't have to do it alone. Let me tell you, the peace of God that passes all understanding is right there for you. If you will press into him, lean into him, and trust him, you can do the hard things in life 
If you go back a couple verses before Philippians 4.13, it says Paul, he knew what it was like to be without. He knew what it was like to be hungry. He knew what it was like to be mistreated, persecuted. But he also knew what it was like to be well-fed. He knew what it was like to have much. And what I love here is he learned the secret. Paul learned the secret, and that was in every single circumstance, I can be content. I can be content. It is not my circumstances that dictate the joy of the Lord in my heart. It's not my circumstances that control me and make me want to be defeated and give up. But I can press in in the hard times, and I can press in in the good times because the Lord is with me. Luke 6, 27, 28 says, but to you who are listening, are you listening today? I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. That's the hard stuff right there. So often we're looking at the hard, the big stuff, but we miss these simple things which are hard to love your enemies a lot of times i don't even want to be near an enemy i don't want to look at the enemy and god's saying love them you're like really god but his love is beyond our love do good to those who hate you and bless those who curse you church in the hour we're in and the days that are ahead you sharing the love of Christ, you walking in peace, you changing your life is going to cause other people to curse you. It's going to cause other people to not like you and to accuse you and to put you down because they want you to be like them. But that's the hard thing. It's hard to walk away from the people that want you to stay like them. But I'm imploring you and encouraging you to be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Because it's so much more freeing. Although it's hard, it's also easy. It's a wild thing. It's a wild thing that I can now go do something hard and it is actually easy because I'm doing it in his strength and his peace and his spirit. And I'm not doing it on my own. You keep trying to do it on your own, you're going to fall flat on your face. This notion that once you're a Christian, that life should be easy is messed up. It's not easy being a Christian. It's all the harder. You want easy, you just keep doing things your own way. You want easy, you just keep doing the drugs and doing the alcohol and doing whatever you want to do and treating people wrong. But I do want to ask, how's that working for you? John 16, says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. We can have peace in him. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart in your troubles. Take heart in your troubles. Because your troubles are strengthening you. Your troubles are building you. Your troubles are making you someone that other people won't even recognize. And they're going to be like, how did you go from this to this? That's your opportunity, Jesus. Jesus has changed my life. Jesus has transformed my life. It's all to him. It's all glory goes to him. We got to lean into Jesus. We got to stay in him. He is where your help comes from. He is my strength in a very present help in trouble. He helps me in my troubles. He helps you in your trouble. See, the, there's an easy you, and that's your flesh. And then there's the hard you, and that's walking in the spirit. It's easy to walk in your flesh. It's easy to do things your way. But the word of God says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I say, boom. You're like going around trying to not walk in the lust of the flesh and you're just falling all over yourself and you're messing up here and you're messing up here. You're doing it in your own strength. But when you walk in the spirit of God, 
You can do what he's asked you to do. You may stumble and fall, but he is going to help you. He will help you to speak truth. He will help you choose the right thing. He will help you to do what you need to do. And the thing is, is you'll never experience more pain in your life than the aftershock of the consequences of the easy you. We mess it up. We make a mess of things. And you'll never feel more regret. And that's why, in the contrast, God's saying, do the hard things. Follow me. Say no to sin. And say yes to my ways. You'll have a peace on the inside. You'll be strengthened on the inside. We need to have a strong spiritual resolve. Resolve means to make a firm decision. And I'm believing in this room, all of us are going to make a firm resolve, a firm decision to follow God with all your heart, to be all in, to stop pretending being a Christian. We got enough Christians so-called out there that are just pretending. It's time for God's sons and daughters the sons and daughters of God need to arise. We need to arise in power. We need to arise in strength and quit cowering in this hour. Quit cowering. Yes, there is grace. We, the grace life is free. Thank God for that. But we have a part in our growing. And that's where we kind of fall short. We're like, yes, I'm a, a child of the king. And Jesus is love. And everything is well. Yet I don't want to do anything that God asked me to do. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to change us. And that means dying to your fleshly ways. That's hard. That's hard. I mean, through the years, we've had to die to self, die to self, die. I mean, you don't, you don't do what we're, I mean, we're constantly still dying to self. We ain't perfect. I know you think we are. We are not perfect. I have to die to self every single day. So I'm not asking you to do anything that I'm not doing. But let me tell you, there's great joy when you die to yourself. There's great joy when I know I'm hidden in him. Great joy to know that his mercy and his grace is available to me in my weaknesses. And that he is taking me to another level and to another level in his goodness and his grace. And he will do the same for you. The road you choose will either bring you forth the power of God and the potential of God, or it will keep you in a ditch. And there's so many Christians right now sitting in a ditch. You know what it's like. You pull into this muddy, grassy spot, and you think, oh, I can get back out. And your wheels start spinning, spinning. There's a whole bunch of us right now. Our wheels are just spinning. Spending. Why? Because you're trying to do it in your own strength. You're trying to take the easy road. The easy road will keep you spinning. Keep your wheels spinning. But Jesus knows when we do hard things, we expand. When we do hard th things, we increase. When we do hard things, we are more capable to do what he asks us to do apart from him. But often when we're spinning our wheels just because things aren't the way we thought they should be. And what happened was unfair. So therefore, we're spinning our wheels. And so that's where we're looking at all the what ifs. What if my life would have taken this turn? What if that would not have happened to me? What if, what if we're always all bound up and focusing on the what ifs? And I heard someone say recently, instead of focusing on all the what ifs, start looking at what is. What is in your hand right now? What is before you right now? That's what you need to focus on. Because God knows who you are. He knows your story. He knows your weaknesses. He knows the dumb things you've done, the good things you've done. He knows you. But he's picked you, and he's called you. And if you will allow the Holy Spirit to change you and use what you have right now, you can see lives changed around you. You'll see your own life changed. That's number one. Your life will be changed. But you have the ability to start fresh right here, right now.
and make the right changes in your life. It's up to you. Some of you need to do the hard thing and stop running in your own strength. Some of you need to do the hard thing and remove the toxic things from your life. To do it God's way and stop being locked up by our wrong choices and the wrong choices of others. It just locks us up. It just keeps us spinning our wheels. But we have a hope for a better tomorrow. You and I have a hope for a better tomorrow. Listen to Hebrews 6, 19. It says, this hope, this confident assurance, some of you, we need that confident assurance. I need that confident assurance. We have an anchor of the soul. It cannot slip. It cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. Some of you need to get that. You're like, oh, the pressures of life are so hard. I can't handle this. Yes, you can. Yes, you can in Jesus. Yes, you can. Because there is a hope. And when you hang on to the anchor of Jesus, when you hang on to the anchor of God, you will be strong. You will have peace. You won't float. You may float a little bit, but you won't be out there on your own drowning. We got to hang on to the anchor of God. It's a safe, steadfast hope that enters within the veil of the heavenly temple, that most holy place in which the very presence of God dwells. I want to be in his presence. I want to be in his presence because when I'm all up in me, it ain't always a good thing. But in his presence, all the fears, all the worries, all the doubts, all the concerns melt away because he's greater. He's stronger. He's able in my weakness to do good things. We have a hope that God is at work. Hope frees you. It frees you. Hope gives us permission to actually live our lives. There's a lot of people walking around, but they're not living their lives. It's like dead man walking. They have no hope. Rise up. Rise up with hope. And so often we want to act spiritual without doing the hard things or growing spiritually. I, I'm telling you what. You know, there's people... They want to act all super spiritual and self-righteous, but yet, are you forgiving seven times 70? I'm just saying. God's called me on it. Don't get up there and act all spiritual when you're harboring ill thoughts against someone else. When I'm not forgiving people, it's easier to quote a scripture than actually live it out. Oh, so many people are so puffed up with the word of God, but yet you look at their life and their fruit is shriveling up and dying. Live the word of God. Shine forth the fruit of God that is beautiful and shows people the goodness of God, the good things of God. So we often want that spiritual experience, but God wants character transformation. I don't know what you all thought. I thought, I guess sometimes we think I want to come to church and I just want to be in Jesus and I just want to float around. And God is saying, I want to change your character. I want you to, to do the right thing my way. I want you to love your spouse, even when they drive you crazy. Not you. I want, to, <laughs> I want you to love your children when they're driving you nuts, when they're doing all the wrong things. You keep loving them. Do the right thing. Do the hard thing in the process. I want you to treat people right that think differently than you. Don't go getting self-righteous. Don't go getting all puffed up. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> well. Come on now. Just love them. Just love them where they're at. People loved you where you were at. People loved you in your sin. People loved you when you messed up. You love other people in the place they're at and help pull them up. Help grow them up. Help draw them to the heart of Jesus. Those are the hard things. Allow God to form your character. Allow God to change you. When you are changed, you can do the hard things in life. <laughs> Joyce Meyer says this, you can feel like doing the wrong thing and still choose to do the right thing. Oh my goodness. How many times have you all been in that situation? Well, probably every day. 
I feel like doing the wrong thing, but I'm going to choose to do the right thing. So many times. I mean, this is a daily thing we're talking about here. I'm not talking just about you can do those hard things when crisis is breaking out. I'm talking about doing the hard thing every moment of every day. There's choices put before us every day. Will we do it God's way or will we do it our way? Every day you're making choices. Is it moving you closer to God or is it moving you further away? You choose every day. That's why every day is a new start. So if you've messed up, there's good news. Start now. Start fresh now. Start anew today. Because he's a good God. He's a merciful God. And I am grateful for that. And also, we've got to quit focusing on our feelings so much. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't matter if you feel it or not. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Our feelings are fickle. Our feelings come and go. We feel this today. And tomorrow, you're going to wake up and feel totally different. Don't be led by your feelings. Be led by the word of God, be led by the presence of God, be led by his spirit. We are a generation so too much up in our feels right now. Oh my goodness. And I'm not saying sometimes you got to kind of see, why do I feel this way? Why am I responding? There's a healthy thing there, but there is a point where you need to quit analyzing, quit inspecting and just say, God change me. I don't know why I say those things. I don't know why I act like that. I don't know why I do what I do. You know, pull the root out. Rip the root out, God, so I can be sanctified. I can be cleansed. And now I can be about the Father's business and not be stopped because of my stupidity and my past and my weaknesses. God wants to promote you, but he's not going to promote you If you do not remain faithful, he promotes us as we're faithful to him. He promotes us as we trust him and allow him to change us. Keep doing what God's called you to do. If he hasn't told you something new, then keep doing it. There's been times in our lives where we're just like, okay, we want more. We want more. We want to do this for God. We want to be, you know, blah. And God's going, keep doing what you're doing. Really, God, that's all. That's all. Yes, keep doing what you're doing. Because you are growing strength in the process. It's in the process. And I know you don't like the process. Nobody wants to hear about the process. But it is in the process that we are made new. It's in the process that God develops character and develops strength muscles. I don't have a whole lot of muscles here, but my spiritual muscles are growing strong. And I intend to keep growing those. I need to grow those. But I'm growing the spiritual muscles a little bit better in that area. But we got to keep pressing in. Keep showing up. Keep trusting God. It is God who opens the doors for your life. Quit worrying about the doors and just worry about him. We get so focused. And I think it's an American thing. We're just always like, oh God, what's the next thing? Oh, God, give me this, give me that. And God's going, would you just serve me? Will you just trust me? Will you just love on people? As you do what's right, you will become the person God's destined you to be. Oh, my goodness. I love the example of Joseph in the Bible. He is such a beautiful example. See, Joseph went from the pit to prison, to the palace. Many of you know this story, but we're going to break it down real quick here. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to go to Genesis, go read the story. It's powerful. But Joseph was favored by his father, Jacob, and given a coat of many colors. And he had two dreams, and Joseph's mistake was to share those dreams with his family. Sometimes when God speaks to you, you just need to ponder it. You just need to let it germinate a little bit. And don't share with other people because people will pour pour cold water on your dreams. Jealousy began to grow in his brothers to the point they wanted to take Joseph out. And they threw him into a pit. And not only that, they sold him into slavery. They wanted to leave him for dead. But one of the brothers, I guess, got convicted and said, well, let's sell him. Good brother. Anyway. Which he served as a slave to Potiphar. Um, And what was interesting is although Joseph was sold into slavery, 
and now was a slave to Potiphar, if you look at the story, he then became an officer, or not an officer, he was promoted to the head of the household. See, I love that about Joseph. Even though the strikes were against him, he still served the Lord with all his heart. I don't know who I'm talking to, but whatever situation you're finding yourself in, then maybe it's uncomfortable, maybe it's not fair, but what I am telling you is keep serving the Lord with all your heart, and God will open up the doors you need. So he was not only promoted to the head of household, or he was, but then another kink came in the whole deal. Potiphar's wife thought he was cute, and so she tried to seduce him. He resisted, good man. But she spread lies and accusations. So what happens? Joseph is now thrown back into prison. You're saying, this is a man of God. This is a man that's doing all the right things, but yet he's getting thrown into the pit and he's getting put into slavery and now he's in the prison. And some of you guys feel that way. You're like, God, I'm following you. God, I'm trying to do what you're saying to do. And I feel like things are getting harder and getting worse. And my life is upside down. That's the best place to be because a miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. And so what's interesting is while Joseph was in the prison, he was promoted to authority over the prisoners. See, he kept flourishing in the hard circumstances, and you can too. He began to interpret dreams in prison, therefore was called to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. I mean, that's pretty cool. And so while he was interpreting the dream of Pharaoh, Pharaoh brought him to the palace. So now Joseph is now out of prison, and he's now in the palace and was promoted to overseer of the land of Egypt for 30 years. Wow. I don't know if it was 30 years or if he was 30. He was 30 years old. I got that wrong. But he was promoted. And so he prevented the famine over the land because of his faithfulness. And not only that, God allowed him to reconnect with his brothers and his family and for him to be able to forgive them and restore that and see god is so good and see i love that about joseph because it's in the hills and the valleys the hills and the valleys you will have good times where you feel like everything's going my way and then you're going to be in the valleys where you're like god where are you where are you i don't see you i don't hear you i don't feel you and that's where you got to keep doing the hard things that's where you got to keep pressing into jesus that's where you got to keep calling upon his name and loving him with your whole heart see joseph was a picture of how he was submissive to god he's a picture of persistence and faithfulness a picture we need to get a hold of in our own lives he's calling us for a life of submission unto god He's calling us to be uh, persistent. And he's calling you and I to be faithful. Will you be faithful in this hour? Will you be faithful when it's uncomfortable? Will you be faithful when people walk away? When people hurt you? When people don't understand you? But will you still be faithful to God? He's calling us. He's calling, calling us. Joseph believed the dream God gave him would come forth. Do you believe the dream that God's called you will come forth? It will. It may not look the way you think. We've learned that. Our dream took a long time. And it's still unfolding. It's not even the full dream. It's just really beginning and we're getting old. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Because God has us in this place, in this moment for a purpose. So it doesn't matter if it's 30 years that your dream rides out, or if it's three years, God has a purpose in it. Quit limiting God. Quit limiting what he can do in your life. God gave Joseph a glimpse of a destination, yet he had some detours. And we all will have some detours, but don't lose sight of God. Don't let your vision grow dim. Don't let your eyes be distracted by all the things going on. Stay focused on him. Stay focused on him. Joseph really could have allowed the mistreatment, that alone of his brothers, to just take him out. But 
he didn't. Instead, he thrived. He thrived. This is doing hard things. This is doing it God's way. It's God's way. He trusted God and he knew God was faithful. He knew there was purpose in the pain. Instead of pointing fingers at all the wrongdoers, he decided to serve God with all his heart and allow God to propel him forward. I love that. I love that because those are things we had to learn in our life. We kept wanting to run ahead of God, you know, like, okay, God, we got this. We are the answer to the world. And then we find out, oh, we are so not the answer. He's the only answer. We're just his tools. We're just his hands and his feet and the mouthpiece. But it's in the process and our struggle that we learn we can do hard things and become stronger. Don't skip the process. Don't skip the process. It'll only take you longer. You'll just keep going around that mountain like the Israelites did, around the mountain. Don't complain. Just obey. Just obey God. The easy road only makes life harder in so many ways, but the hard road makes us stronger and more dependent on God. That's the ultimate goal. That's really the ultimate thing. God is just trying to get his people to be more dependent upon him. We think it's all for us. (laughs) It's like, oh God, you're going to make me so great. And you're going to open up doors and all these blessings are going to flow. And he's like, no, I just want you to be dependent on me. I just want you to trust me. I just want you to love me and lean in to me. See, he wants us to love those who have hurt us. He wants us to do the hard things. Those are the hard things of life. The easy thing is to withhold love. The easy thing is to become resentful and mean. Forgiving, that's hard. That's so hard. But staying angry and getting revenge, isn't that easy? That's so easy. But forgiving is hard. It's so hard to let go of a grudge that you have against someone. But it is easy to be bitter. I know none of you have been bitter. You're better, right? You're better. It's so hard to let down the walls and let people in. I mean, I've had to do that. I'm still working on that at times. Because when you get hurt, you put up walls. And then you get hurt some more and you put up another wall. And then you get hurt a little more. And pretty soon you've got this wall all around you and you're signaling, don't come near me. Well, and people won't. People won't. It's easy to keep up the walls. But it's hard to start letting the walls come down and let people in. But let me tell you, life change happens when we do that. Being patient is hard. Everyone say hello, amen, yes, Jesus. But being impatient, it is so easy. It's so easy. I can sometimes be the most impatient person, right? (laughs) I'm like, come on, let's go, let's go. That's my boys. They're probably like, oh, mom, calm down, you know. But learning to be patient, that's hard. But in him, we can do it. In him, we can do it. It's hard to push away from the drug. It's hard to push away from the alcohol. It's hard to push away from the drama, the pornography, the lying. Some of you, the eating. Some of you, the shopping. That's something I got to guard. Don't stay out of the stores. Don't go to the store. Don't look at the shoes. Don't look at stuff. Yeah. It's hard to push away from the complaining. Oh, we love to whine. We love to complain about everything. But, and it's, it's hard to push away, but it's so easy to keep running to it. And see, the enemy knows that. And that's why, don't be surprised when these things keep being dangled in front of you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows those things that you like. And he will dangle it. It's in those moments you have a decision. Am I going to take the easy way and grab it? Or am I going to take the hard thing and walk away? 
walk away. Do the hard thing. Do it God's way. Because when you do it God's way, there's freedom. And God is calling his people to freedom. Because once you get free, then you can reach out and grab a hold of someone else and say, there's freedom because I've experienced it. There's freedom for your life. There's hope for your life. There is a joy. You don't have to live bitter. You can get better. And we want to grow. That's what church is all about. Coming together, being together, growing together. Iron sharpen iron. You might drive each other crazy, but it's all good because it's making you better. It's making you stronger. We don't always all agree. agree. We can agree to disagree, but we're all in this together. We need the body of Christ. We need one another. Don't just come to church once every three weeks. Come every week because every week God speaks something new. Every week God does something new. Every week you have an opportunity to encourage someone or someone to encourage you. Every week there's something brand new. That's why we're called the family of God. We're the body of God. We come together and we grow and we serve and we love and we help and we correct one another in love, but then we grow stronger. And it's, this is all part of doing hard things for God. It's hard to come to church every time, time we have church. I know it. I mean, this morning my alarm went off and I was tired. I woke up at two o'clock. I don't know why. And I was up for about an hour. And then I was just like, great. I got to get up and I got to preach. And my alarm goes off at six. And I'm just like, Tim, you can take this today. I'm going to just stay here and I'm going to sleep. And he's like, get up, get up. I'm like, no, I don't want to get up. It's hard, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Keep your eyes on what God is speaking. Keep your eyes on Jesus because it's worth it to press in. It's worth it to stand up. It's worth it to speak truth when people won't agree with you. It's worth it. It's worth the price we pay for the gospel. It's worth doing it God's way. I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. It's worth it to do hard things. It's worth it. Let go of the easy and pursue the hard in God. And let me tell you, it will get easier. It will get easier because you get stronger. You get stronger. And then you hit up, hit up against another hard wall. And guess what? You're infused with the Holy Ghost. And you can go through that thing with his power, with his presence, with his peace. I'm telling you from experience. Because it's not been just a joy ride. It has been struggle after struggle. Dying to self over and over. Trusting God when I'm not seeing the end. But he always comes through. He always comes through. He's faithful. He's good. He's worthy. He's worthy. When you see people that have achieved much, you're only seeing where they're at today. See, a lot of, not that we've achieved really much, but you guys seeing us here today, you think, oh, they just got all their stuff together. We had to walk through years of hardship. Years of tears, years of not knowing what the next thing was going to be, years of trusting God. Okay, God, I don't know that I can trust you anymore. Okay, God, I'm going to trust you. Years and years and years of continuing to follow him, to love him, to get back up when I fall down. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. You have to die to self over and over and make many sacrifices. But it's so worth it. Look at Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It is a sacrifice to follow Jesus. It is um, hard to give him that, we've heard, eternal yes. But I am determined to keep giving that eternal yes to Jesus 
every moment of every day, to show up week after week, to do it in the good and do it in the bad and to hold to your word, to follow through, to stay committed. These are hard things to have the tough conversations with people and to have healthy boundaries. We need to do all these things and to stay joyful in the middle of circumstances. We can do hard things, which is equals sacrifice. Yeah, worship team, come on up. When our hearts know God is with us in it all, you can be that living sacrifice. See, that, that's one thing. I've always read that, you know, be a living sacrifice. What does a living sacrifice mean? It means giving my all to Jesus. It means choosing love over hate. It means choosing to keep my peace and not getting all up in my feels and reacting. Because when I walk in love and I walk in peace and when I choose it to do things God's way, my life is a living sacrifice. When you're in worship, it's like a beautiful fragrance going up to God. I don't know if you feel that in worship. When all our hearts, with all our imperfections and all our insecurities and all our worries and fears and, and messes, it's amazing that the people of God can gather and we start worshiping Jesus and you just feel this presence beautiful presence of God fill the room and it's a beautiful fragrance and God's like he's like saying those are my kids those are my people and I love them and I'm gonna protect them and I'm gonna walk with them and I'm gonna be with them and see we draw strength from that let your life be a living sacrifice sacrifice the things that you know you need to let go of and do it to honor him. Not for people. It's for him. Don't do it to impress people. Because that's not worth it. <laughs> do everything to honor him. Do everything to glorify him. If you look down a few verses. You don't have the scripture. It says we need to have a sincere love to hate what is evil, to cling to what is good. These are things that are being a living sacrifice. Let me read a few more. To be devoted to one another in love. To honor one another above oneself. To serve the Lord with zeal. Be joyful in hope. To be patient in affliction. Faithfully pray. Share with those in need. Practice hospitality. You got to practice these things. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That's what it means to be a living sacrifice. To rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn is being a living sacrifice. To be united, one heart, one mind, one purpose. Do not be proud and do not be arrogant. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Live at peace with everyone. These are the things Christians should be doing and living before the world. Do not take revenge. Do not do things your way, but do it God's way. These are the everyday choices we have to make, but will we make them and glorify him? One last scripture, and then I'm going to have you guys stand. 2 Corinthians 1, 7 through 10. This is Paul speaking. And he says, And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. 
He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Stand up, you guys. We have a hope. We have an everlasting hope that our God is with us. Our God will deliver us. And our God will empower us to do the hard things. To do things in faith. To walk out our faith. To walk out in peace and love. Those are the things that are impossible for us. But it's not impossible for him. Amen. And so as we close... I just want us to close with this song. Just a couple minutes left and I'll let you all go. But I want us to go back into this song, just the chorus and the bridge. And I just want us to lift our hearts to the Lord. And for some of you this morning, you need to embrace God's power in your life, his strength in your life. And knowing that he is empowering you to do the hard things. He's equipping you and strengthening you to do what seems impossible in your own strength. But you're going to do it. And so as we sing these words, I just want you to just receive it. And then also before we close, I just want to pray over our nation and over our world and over our family.